Hello and welcome to our Retire Early Lifestyle, where we're fixing up an old house without a pile of cash. We'll show you what we're doing and some of the progress from time to time on this channel. You might be wondering, retire early, but these people don't look that young. <laughs> so for our new people, let us clear that up. We've been retired early lifestyle for several decades, starting in the States before we spent 13 years living abroad. Now we're back in the USA and we are now traditional retirement age in our early 60s and so we'll keep our retired early for a few more years if that's okay with you. Now to the video you've been waiting for. When I first met Frank, guess what he would do in his spare time? Read inspirational business books on how to get rich and build wealth. He had so many books on building up an empire and retiring early that I couldn't find room in the small bookshelves for all of them. Whenever a new business book was published, he'd run down to the bookstore and buy it. He would also make goals of how much money he wanted in one year, two years. I remember reading some of the goals in one of his business notebooks, and he had written that within five years he wanted to have a million dollars saved up. That wasn't too far-fetched because at that time we were business owners. In fact, we had multiple businesses in several different states with employees managing them and so we weren't doing too bad financially. Boy, we sure have come a long way since then because that was 35 years ago and many things have changed since then. You're probably wondering, well, what has changed? Well, our attitude about money changed. We realized early on that chasing money, leaving your wife and children at home alone for weeks at a time, which is very detrimental on the marriage and family as a whole, eating greasy fast food and TV dinners, sacrificing your health, and living the stressful rat race traveling lifestyle is not where true security and happiness was for us. Frank told me later that chasing money was not his calling, and because of that we sized down from multiple businesses to just one and we turned it into a family business and put our sons to work too. Over the years we learned to live more simply and resourceful and live below our means and save a little bit of money and it was working quite well. Anyone can size down without it affecting your quality of life and creature comforts. In fact it gets better because you realize what is important in life. Believe me that Jones's attitude will keep you on the hamster wheel for a long, long time. So Frank stopped chasing the money and here is what we learned along the way. We thought you might like to know some of the insights and be inspired in some way. In this video we're having a discussion about something that we all aspire to which is the freedom of never having to worry about money again. Let us dispel some of the myths in this discussion. Now, how am I qualified to have this discussion, you're probably wondering. Well, let me tell you, I, have, I started out in life as a young man. My goals were to become a business magnate. Seriously, a business magnate, somebody that's talked about in the news because of how much money they've got and how much they own, which there's plenty of those today. I'm going to give you some insight of what I've learned as someone that's actually started out putting those ideas in motion and then had a change of heart and decided that wasn't the way to go. But there are two schools of thought out there that some people lean more towards school A of thought and other people lean more towards school B. And it's a choice. I don't want to make it sound like a person was born with this leaning. Even if a person feels as if they were born in this leaning, it is imperative to understand that we do make choices every single day. And how we think is a choice people can change direction at any time. So in group A, you have the people that go for quote unquote security.
And you hear this in phrases such as financial security. And isn't that what the freedom of never having to worry about money again, isn't that really talking about financial security? Think about it, security and not worrying. They seem like they're part of the same school of thought in school A. In the second school of thought, you have a different way of thinking I realize there's no such thing as true security in anything in life. And we say things like this, they're cliches. I mean, yes, you literally could walk in front of a bus and get killed tomorrow. But you say, I know, I, if I die, I die. But while I'm alive, I want to eat for the three days. I want to be wealthy while I'm alive. There's no guarantee that you will ever achieve a level of money where you would never have to worry about money again. That, that's the first thing. Even in the people that put out those thoughts in their videos will tell you that most people won't achieve it. But you can die trying, and in the meantime, you will have spent the hours in your days, weeks, months, and years pursuing something that most people won't achieve. They make it sound as if all you've got to do is set these things in motion and then hire other people to run it for you. Well, take it from somebody that's done that. Yes, I have done that. I've started multiple businesses way before the internet when there was no such thing as internet scalability, but there was still brick and mortar on the ground scalability. And I used that scalability to the to utmost of my ability. And I scaled into multiple businesses and I hired people and I did create time in my life. And I did have a somewhat of a semi-passive income. But as I say, anything can happen in life. There is no security. You know, I mean, competition moves in. New technology is discovered. Your method becomes obsolete. That's the whole idea is that people in this second school of thinking, they're not ignoring the fact that there's no guarantee. They're embracing the idea that there's no such thing as security. And the idea behind the freedom of never having to worry about money again, that is a myth, is that all you've got to do is... so. And I see this in the fire community this is why I'm talking about this is that it's portrayed as if you achieve this number then you'll never have to worry about money again and it's all because what they're really seeking is a feeling of inner peace and security instead what I have learned is that the freedom of never having to worry about money again comes only with the realization what true freedom really is. And it is the freedom of literally not depending on having to have a certain amount of money. What we need to be focusing on is abundance. This is what we want to focus on. And when I say abundance, if you think in a pile of cash, you're still focusing on the wrong thing. Okay, so I'm talking about abundance in all spheres because we're talking about the lifestyle. Our vision of the abundance needs to get wider. You see all these videos online, oh, I, you know, I made all this money, listen to me, or you also see, uh, you know, people uh, in the fire community, uh, they parade figures around like, this is the achievement, this is the figure. We say don't go for figure. Uh, yeah, I, Clearly, figures are important. I'm not minimizing and sweeping them under the rug. Money is important. I'm not saying it's not. I am saying that the mindset needs to shift its focus from the money specifically to abundance into the picture where it morphs into the picture of the lifestyle that you want. And I know that you're saying, yeah, but I need money. But when you put this abundance mindset 
in its place and start taking your focus off that pile of cash and you start saying, well, I want time abundance. I want time abundance because I want to spend more time with my family, because I want to travel, because I want to have fun every day. I want to have more hobbies. Okay, so now your mind will start tuning in to the information, whereas before, it's like a horse with blinders on, you're focusing right there. And if you want to achieve something, that focus is important. But I'm saying that the focus is misplaced when we're looking at the lifestyle right now. Now you can make all the money you want, and as long as you're happy while you're doing it, and as long as you don't have to sacrifice any of your principles or anything that is really valuable in life, such as health, happiness, contentment, relationships, and personal liberty. If you can have all of those, all of the things that are part of a normal free society that we have tended to take for granted in America for so long, until something comes along and wants to take it away. Isn't it just like human nature though? The saying that you don't know what you've got until it's gone. That's exactly what's happening this day and age. And I'm so happy that many people are realizing it. And so the freedom of never having to worry about money again. Let us not get bamboozled into believing that it's all about trying to achieve some sort of monetary level or figure that only the very few historically achieved because it isn't true. You can learn to live within your means and you can be happy doing it and we're a testament of that fact on this channel. Ancient writings tell us not to worry because we have no control over the future anyway. We shouldn't be worrying, we should be doing something about our situation. So other ways of not worrying about money, absolutely stay out of debt, don't make financial commitments, don't make promises what you'll pay people that things may change. Our personal liberty is, it may sound like a long term thing, but it's actually one day at a time. Our liberty is one day at a time. So we don't have any control over, you know, like next week, next year, what's going to happen. And the past is gone. Every single day we have that one day. And that day you either have liberty or you don't. And so you wouldn't want to have like a long-term commitment like a mortgage because it's interfering with your daily liberty. You see, for example, if you wanted to keep your daily liberty today, therefore you wouldn't make a promise of paying something that you couldn't pay off today. People think you need so much to live on in the United States and they can't believe we only lived on $1,500, but it's because we had no mortgage, we had no car debt, we had no debts whatsoever, and we don't do health insurance. So when you take the two, those are the two biggest, I think, is your house and your health insurance. And so we didn't have those. And so anybody could live on $1,500 if they're not paying uh, astronomical. They pay $1,500 just for their health insurance. Here's a good thought that you just brought up. Going back to the two different schools of thought. In the school of thought of security, you have people that rely on certain ways to feel or to, in their mind, achieve security. And then in the other, school of thinking, those people are more self-reliant and believe in achieving or at least pursuing and, and achieving their security themselves. Security either comes from increasing our knowledge base and taking matters into our own hands, whereas in the other group they default their knowledge to others institutions, systems, and usually have to pay a lot more to those institutions in order to have the feeling of security. So you've got two different people here in two different camps. Both people are worthwhile. God loves all of you, every one of us, and 
but there's two very distinct ways that people think and there's no sense trying to convince one group to be like the other group thanks for coming to the video i'm glad you stayed with it let me know your thoughts and have a wonderful day